10 largest spaceships comparison from films. Number 10, Varro Generational Ship, 5.8 miles long. The Varro Generational Ship was first seen in Star Trek Voyager in the episode The Disease, originally starting life as a small pod. Further habitation structures were added that resulted in the formation of a vessel that was at least 5.8 miles long. By its completion, there were 36 pods and the structure was estimated to weigh in excess of 28 million metric tons. It had 14 warp injectors to allow it to cruise through the stars, and rather than being designed for battle, this massive ship was used to house successive generations of the Varro species. It's thought to have been home to tens of thousands of crew and had been in existence for more than 400 years by the time Voyager encountered it. Only one of these ships was ever built, and by the end of the episode, it had broken up into all of its constituent parts once more. Number 9. Voth City Ship, 6.1 miles long. The Starship Voyager was relatively small by Federation standards, but it's still a testament to the size of the Voth City Ship that Janeway's vessel was able to be entirely held inside it. In the episode Distant Origin, the stranded Starfleet crew met the Voth, who were the descendants of a species of hadrosaur from Earth. Their ship was just over six miles long and functioned as a spacefaring city. Capable of transwarp speeds, the Voth city ship was able to traverse large distances through space much quicker than other civilizations, which gave them a distinct advantage over everyone else in the Delta Quadrant. As you'd expect from a race who were able to build such a massive ship, their technology was far beyond that of Starfleet's at the time. So much so that once the Voth had captured Voyager within their ship, they created a dampening field that rendered all technology within it useless. Number 8. The Lex, 6.2 miles long. The Lex was the central ship and character of the TV show Lex, and as you'd probably expect from a vessel that could travel between universes, it was huge. At 6.2 miles long, this was more than a pilot could handle on their own, so fortunately the Lex was actually an organic spacecraft that had a base level of intelligence. It was a type of insect originally designed to help cleanse the universe of humans so insects could take their place and as such had insect eyes that are used to target its weapons and could even breed with other insects. The weaponry on board this ship was extremely powerful and was able to destroy entire planets. This made it one of the most feared ships in the Lex universe, and there were very few others that could stand up against it. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top 5s with notifications on. Number 7. Superclass Star Destroyer, 11.8 miles long. The Superclass Star Destroyers, also known as Executor Class Star Dreadnoughts, were some of the largest and most feared of all the ships in the Star Wars universe. At around 11.8 miles long, they had 13 engine thrusters that allowed them to move at up to 65 miles per hour when not in hyperspace. But it was the equipment they had on board that made one of them worthy of being Darth Vader's flagship. With a crew of many thousands of people, they were fitted with at least 5,000 turbo laser and ion cannon batteries, concussion missile tubes, and thousands of smaller ships such as TIE fighters, bombers, and interceptors, making them virtually undefeatable. According to reports gathered by the Rebel Alliance, at least 12 of these monster ships was built, and it was only by their grit and determination that they were finally able to destroy Darth Vader at the Battle of Endor by destroying its bridge, which sent it crashing into the second Death Star. Number 6. Alien City Destroyer, 14.9 miles across. When we were first introduced to City Destroyers in 1996's Independence Day, it's still hard to grasp quite how large they actually were. The disc-shaped ships were just under 15 miles across and 2.5 miles tall at their thickest point, and they weren't perfectly smooth, instead having a control tower that protruded out from the upper dome and pedal-like design on the underside. It was with these ships that the Harvesters were able to cause extreme damage to their target worlds, where they would focus on the most strategically important locations. They were defended by an unknown number of attack craft that could launch at short notice to prevent an aerial assault, as well as an invisible physical shield that would stop any unauthorized vehicles from getting too close. The most offensive weapon that these ships are known to have has become one of the most famous in science fiction. A huge cannon that's revealed on the underside of the ship opens up and that emits a ball of powerful energy enough to obliterate a city. 
It had a secondary function, however, and could be used as a mining laser, which proved to be the ultimate endgame for the harvesters. With the ability to carve a hole to the center of a planet, the city destroyers were an integral part of the invading aliens' plans. Number 5. Vorlon Planet Killer, 28 miles long. The Eclipse-class planet killers from Babylon 5 were 28-mile-long vessels that weighed as much as 3,000 billion metric tons. And as their name suggests, they were used to destroy entire worlds. The aft sections of these vessels are entirely dedicated to engines and thrusters to allow them to move through space, while the tentacle appendages and front section contain the emitters for the planet-killing weapon itself. It was not known how many of these ships were ever created, but as far as anyone was aware, only one was ever successfully destroyed as a result of being targeted by the combined efforts of all of the remaining first ones. Number 4. Whale Probe, 46 miles long. In Star Trek IV The Voyage Home, the mysterious whale probe appeared in orbit around Earth. It had been built by a species of cetaceans in search of their kind throughout the universe and had originally detected humpback whales on Earth. By the time it returned, however, the whales had become extinct and the true purpose of the probe became clear. At more than 46 miles long, it dwarfed every ship Starfleet had. It was cylindrical in shape and had a small deployable sphere that detached from the main structure and was used as a communication device. This had the unintended consequence of disabling all technology within range of it, but when it realized there were no whales replying to its calls, it began to vaporize all the water on Earth. It remains one of the largest ships ever encountered by Starfleet, and one of the most powerful on account of its planet-killing abilities. It's still unknown whether the probe was part of a larger fleet or was a solitary ship, but it's quite possible the cetaceans who built it had a number of other giant vessels. Number 3. V'ger, 60.9 miles long. The mysterious V'ger was a machine entity that was encountered by the Federation in Star Trek as it was heading directly to Earth. At almost 61 miles long, it was surrounded by a cloud many times larger than that and emitted huge amounts of radiation and light. At first, it was thought there was a crew of thousands, but it soon became clear that the ship had a mind of its own. Rather worryingly, its mission was to learn everything it could about the universe, and to do so, it would absorb anything of interest to it, including ships and people. In a surprising twist, it became clear that V'ger was actually of human design. It began life as the Voyager 6 probe that had been launched from Earth in 1999 and fell into a black hole. After emerging, it was found by an advanced civilization of machines who turned it into one of themselves and gave it sentience before sending it back into space to continue its original mission. Number 2. Death Star, 99 miles across. Possibly the most famous giant spaceship of all is the Death Star from Star Wars. The first one was around 75 miles across and had 1.7 million crew members. But after its destruction, the Galactic Empire decided to supersize the designs. It's not entirely clear how big the second version of the moon-sized vessel was, but estimates put it somewhere in the region of between 99 and 250 miles across. Covered with thousands of turbo laser and ion cannon batteries, it was a fortress. And it was only because the rebels had access to the plans of the ship that they were able to destroy it. Of course, the main weapon of the Death Star was the Super Laser, which, even partially charged, could cause extreme damage to a world's surface, but when fully charged, could release enough energy to destroy a planet. Number 1. Alien Mothership, 3,000 miles across. While the Harvester City Killer ships were huge, they were all deployed from the Mothership, which is the largest ship by far to be featured on TV or film. It's similar in appearance to the smaller ships, but at almost 3,000 miles across, dwarfed even the Earth's moon. Commanded by the Harvester Queen, this ship contains almost 100 city killer ships, millions of harvesters, and contains everything they need to survive. Giant areas are dedicated to farming organic matter for them to feed on, and vast regions inside are docking stations for the massive fleet that's contained inside. The ship itself has camouflage systems, energy cannons, deflector shields, and EMP weapons. But it's also the harvester's secret weapon when it comes to taking over a planet. Long legs fold out so that it can land on the surface, and then its central plasma drill is used to quickly bore a hole to the center of the planet so it can extract the core. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.